In this video, I'm going to teach you about stoichiometry, and we'll do some conversions from moles to moles and grams to grams. So what exactly is stoichiometry? Well, it is a section of chemistry that involves calculations, and these are based on the relationships between reactants and or products in a chemical reaction. So before we can do any stoichiometry calculations, we need to start with a balanced chemical equation. So here's our first chemical equation as an example. In this chemical equation, we have aluminum hydroxide reacting with sulfuric acid to produce aluminum sulfate and water. When we balance this equation, we need to have two aluminums on the left. We also have to have three sulfurs on the left. So we'll use a coefficient of three for the sulfuric acid. And then, to balance the hydrogen, we have a total of 12 hydrogens on the left, so we have to put a 6 in front of the water on the right. Now that the equation is balanced, let's just remind ourselves what exactly do the coefficients of 2, 3, 1, and 6, what do those actually mean in terms of stoichiometry? Well, the coefficients in any balanced chemical equation represent the relative numbers of moles. That means that you can use those coefficients to convert from moles of one chemical to moles of another. Let's go ahead and do that in an example. So this question says, how many moles of sulfuric acid are required to react completely with 17.4 moles of aluminum hydroxide? We're going to begin with our given information, 17.4 moles of aluminum hydroxide. This will be a one-step conversion and our answer will have units of moles of sulfuric acid. We'll put the units we want to get rid of on the bottom, put the units you want to see in your answer on the top, and now we get the coefficients to tell us the relative numbers of moles. So there are, as you can see, three moles of sulfuric acid for every two moles of aluminum hydroxide. And then on our calculator, we would do 17.4 times three divided by two, and we get an answer of 26.1 moles of sulfuric acid. And as you can see, we can cross off the units of moles of aluminum hydroxide just to make sure. So that was a one-step conversion. In summary, anytime you do a conversion from moles to moles, you start with a balanced chemical equation. It's going to be a one-step conversion, and you can use the coefficients to set up the mole ratio as a conversion factor. Now let's take a look at another reaction. This one involves the decomposition of potassium chlorate to produce potassium chloride and oxygen gas. When we balance this equation, our coefficients will be 2, 2, and 3. But in this problem, we're going to have to convert not from moles to moles, but rather from grams to grams. Here's the example. How many grams of oxygen gas will be produced from the complete decomposition of 43.2 grams of potassium chlorate. So in this problem, we have to start with grams, 43.2 grams of potassium chlorate, but it's going to require three steps to get to grams of oxygen. In our first step, let's put grams of potassium chlorate on the bottom, but now we're going to go to moles of that same chemical then we'll put moles of potassium chlorate on the bottom in our next step. And now we'll go to moles of oxygen. And finally, moles of oxygen will now be on the bottom in our final step. And we go back to grams of oxygen. So in these three steps, we have to supply the numbers. The first step does not involve the coefficients. It involves the periodic table. And when we calculate the molar mass of potassium chlorate, from the atomic masses of potassium, chlorine, and oxygen, we get 122.55 grams per mole. Now's the time to use the coefficients. There are three moles of oxygen produced for every two moles of potassium chlorate that decomposes. And then finally, back to the periodic table, there are 32 grams of oxygen in one mole. We can cross off all of the units except for the final unit, which is grams of O2. 43.2 divided by 122.55 times 3 
divided by 2 times 32, and that gives us an answer of 16.9 grams of oxygen. So for a three-step conversion involving grams to grams, you still have to begin with a balanced chemical equation. It's a three-step conversion. The first step will convert from grams to moles using the molar mass as calculated from the periodic table. The second step uses the coefficients in the balanced equation to generate a mole ratio. And then finally, the third step uses the molar mass again as we go from moles back to grams. All right, well, hopefully with those two examples, a one-step conversion and a three-step conversion, you should be in good shape to do the practice problems that I have set for you. If you have any questions, you can watch this video and slow it down and pause it. And you can always email me if you have questions. Thanks for watching.